Hey everyone, Reflected here. And today, I'd like to show you my all-time favorite flying jacket, the A2, and tell you a few things about it that should help you select the right one if you ever want to buy such a jacket. As you know, I love everything aviation related, and therefore, I'm an avid collector of original and reproduction flying jackets. My favorite of all of them is the A2 that was used as a summer or intermediate flying jacket by the US Army Air Forces in World War II. It was produced from the early 30s until 1942, but you'll find pictures of pilots wearing them even in the Korean War. There were a few dozen contracts awarded to different manufacturers, each adding their own flavor to the core design, the official specs, a different color shape, pocket flap, different fit, if you ever buy one, repro or original, make sure you check the specifics of the given contract and see if that's something you like or not. There are several cheap repros available, but I would highly recommend getting an accurate repro of a specific contract. These are not to be confused with those baggy mall bomber jackets of the 80s or uh, the potato sack A2s with side entry pockets issued to Air Force pilots today. Avery leather and 5 star leather can get you a decent repro at an affordable price, but there are more expensive high end repros that painstakingly copy every minutia of original jackets, even the thread color and stitch count matches exactly the originals, like a new old stock jacket. Such are Eastman leather, Goodwear, or my personal favorite, Bill Kelso. These letter 3 seem rather pricey at first, but remember, it's an investment that's gonna last a lifetime. Leather jackets only get better with time and wear. The two jackets I'm gonna show you today were both made by Bill Kelso. The lighter one is a rough wear 23380 contract from December 1941 in size 40 long, and the darker one is a rough wear 27752 from April 1942 in size 42. Originally produced by the same manufacturer, Rough Wear Clothing Co. in Middletown, Pennsylvania. These contracts are quite similar. Both have a boxy but athletic cut with wide back and shoulders, high armholes, beautifully curved pocket flaps and rather large and wide collars, which I love. As seen on many A2 contracts, especially early war A2s, the collars are not directly sewn to the body, but they have a collar stand, like vintage shirts. This makes the collar stand higher, especially when buttoned down, and it looks very stylish. The downside is that it may get in the way of your chin when you're sitting. Some other A2 contracts didn't have such a collar stand in order to make production easier. You're not standing in line at the quartermaster's desk, it's your call. Check the contract you like and see what kind of color it has. The most apparent difference between these two contracts is the label. The 23380 has a second label, just under the main one, that says Property Air Force US Army. The main label was probably already produced when the new regulation came out in early 1942 to include that extra bit, so this is how Roughware sold it. The 27752 is a later production from April 1942 where the extra line was already incorporated on the main label, so it's a single piece. There are a few important things to keep in mind when selecting an A2. The first one is the material. There were several wartime A2s made of cowhide and goat skin, but the majority was made of horsehide and to me, these are the true A2s. Horsehide can feel very rigid and thick at first compared to other leathers. It requires some time and effort to break in, like a pair of salvage jeans for example. But if, just like fighter and bomber pilots in World War II, you wear the hell out of them, to fly, to eat, to party, to rest, it gets broken in and then it fits like a glove. Nothing feels like a broken in horsehide jacket, it will mold to your body. Horsehide also develops an amazing patina with time. The more you wear and abuse it, the better it will look, trust me. These jackets weren't designed to be babied. The next decision point is the color. The original specifications say seal brown. Er, what? What color is a seal? 
Well, that's exactly the question most wartime manufacturers asked as well. And the outcome was a wide variety of interpretations between a dark chocolate brown and a lighter russet brown, and everything in between. Also, in the last years of the war, there were several heavily used jackets that were re-dyed a darker seal color and reissued to new pilots. Today's manufacturers usually offer the darker version and call it seal brown, and the lighter version called russet. Both are basically a beautiful chocolate brown with a very subtle reddish undertone in direct sunlight. The most difficult thing about getting the right A2 is the fit. This jacket was designed at a time when high-rise pants were the norm. The belt line was at or just below the belly button, unlike today's jeans. Most repro manufacturers offer long versions for taller fellas, but keep in mind that if you go up a few sizes until the back length works with modern pants, the jacket is gonna fit like a potato sack. Another thing about A2s is that the back is a single panel and it doesn't have bi-swing flaps like the Navy's M422A or G1, so it will feel a bit restrictive, especially when reaching forward. And the sleeves may ride up your forearm, but this is all very normal. Something you need to accept when wearing an A2. Because it's a rather restrictive design, do not make the mistake of going very trim either, like with a contemporary fashion jacket. It just doesn't work and it will look stupid. It needs to fit a little loose in the torso. But an A2 that's too large also looks strange. You have way too much room in the torso and belly area, and all that extra leather will get in the way. If, however, you nail the fit, and your A2 fits you nice and snug but without being too small, it's probably the sharpest looking jacket ever made. It's both elegant, vintage, and rock and roll at the same time. Never in the course of human history did flyers look as cool as USAAF pilots in World War II, not even Tom Cruise and Top Gun. To get the right size, I recommend getting in touch with the repro makers for advice, or you can contact someone who has the same jacket for the exact measurements. If you like, you can adorn your jacket with some extras to give it more personality, like this RAF Thunderer escape whistle that was often worn attached to the throat hook in case the plane went down over the North Sea. But you can also get a name tag and a leather or felt squadron badge and sew it on the left chest, or even have an artist paint the back with some nose art. I'm a real jacket nerd. I could go on forever about every little detail and the relative merits of different A2 contracts, but I won't waste any more of your time. This was just a high-level overview, and I hope you find it helpful in case you want to get your own A2. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. See ya!